Hi, um, I'm Harper. Um, thanks for the lovely introduction. And uh, today I'm going to talk about a couple things that are pretty, sounds a little hot, a couple things that I think will be pretty good. So three things. First of all, the first thing I'm going to talk about is building a great team. The second thing I'll be talking about is practicing failure. And the uh, third thing will be uh, facilitating community. Early 90s, and it kind of said, like Harper, there is a world out there of trying to figure out what's behind the locked door, how do you unlock the door, how do you solve these problems. This is really important. It talks about these things, sharing, openness, collaboration, engaging on the hands-on imperative. These are all things that I value, that I think a lot of people value. So anyway, Threadless was started in about 2000, and I joined in about 2005 as CTO. Um, and Threadless, we were known for inventing crowdsourcing which was a surprise to us because we once went to MIT and we were at this conference and they were like, okay, and here's Threadless, they invented crowdsourcing. We were like, crowd what? Awesome. We had about 100,000 designs that were uploaded. Um, we had millions and millions of votes on these designs. Millions of t-shirts were sold and then we grew from X to XX. I'm not allowed to talk about revenue, but I figured this was a good demonstration of our growth. Looking at startups and just trying to figure out what am I going to do next? Like, why am I here? What is actually going to happen? And, and out of nowhere, this happened. You know, why? Why would you have, you know, Harper, why Harper? Why would you have this person that is obviously doesn't fit in necessarily to the mold, obviously not a political strategist? And this is a really simple idea. The idea is, if you want rice cakes, you go to the rice cake dealer. So when you translate this to this story, if you want engineering, you need to go to the engineers. And if you want really good engineering, you have to go to the really good engineers. And so in our world, we do engineering. It's very simple. All our life, all the people we hired is all engineers, software engineers. And in politics, um, I don't know how many of you heard our comments yesterday, we talked about this briefly, but in politics, for the longest time, it was like e-campaigns, like e-campaigns. And what we needed to do is we needed to slash the e off. We needed to do campaigns, because we're in a world now where technology is in everything. So it's exciting, right? Because we can now do marketing and commerce and campaigns and all this other stuff, finally, for real, instead of doing e-marketing, e-commerce, and e-campaigns. Um, so anyway, what do you do when, you, when you're set out to do technology at this scale? Um, it's, it's pretty simple. You just hire a bunch of really great people. We hired about 40 engineers. Um, we hired them from all of these really great companies. And I, we had this idea, although we would never have said it publicly, that we were going to raise a billion dollars. Um, and we had about 18 months. And so you start from zero, and you have 18 months to build a billion dollar company. And so the one thing that you have to focus on, no matter what, is execution. What do we do? Well, we have to build a platform. And this was a pretty simple thing. It was called Narwhal. Did anyone? So anyway, sorry. Uh, Narwhal, which was this platform we made, was really a concept. And it was this concept, this very simple idea. We need to build an API that acts as a foundation. And this foundation, this API, will give us the freedom to do the number one thing, which is execution. We need to focus on the products. We cannot deviate from the plan. We know we have 18 months. We started from zero. We need to make sure that we focus on all of these things and execute on these things but we need that foundation to build upon. The exciting thing we did with mobile, which is actually, uh, I think, the, one of the most innovative things we did, is we invested very heavily in responsive design. What this means is that all of our apps, internal or external, were able to be used on a mobile phone. Our contribution apps, these are probably the apps I'm most proud of. We raised just a boatload of money, and um, it cost about $800 a month to host, and I think we raised about $690 million. Um, so it was a pretty good ROI. And then you can move the conversation from how are you storing it to how are you answering questions. And the thing that I want to see big of is I don't, I don't, don't want to see big data anymore. I don't want to see it in marketing stuff. I want to see Oracle, EMC, all these companies come out and say, here's the product that will give you big answers. Because we raised boatloads of dollars. It allowed us to do better content distribution. Um, we did an aggressively more efficient voter contact. Um, and it was incredibly awesome. But, um, and all this technology, the thing that was most important is it allowed us to focus on what solved the problem instead of having to shoehorn everything into that solution. So that's why we did everything. We used all technologies. Um, so I mentioned this a little earlier, but failure was absolutely not an option. Um, we invested in two things. The first thing was user experience. And the second one was just general testing. Okay, so let's go into the important lessons. So one, remember building a great team. Two, practicing failure. And three, facilitating community. But uh, I, I think that one of the biggest problems is that people don't talk about the solution. They don't talk about 
we'll get into this a little later, but they don't talk about what they're doing in a way that's compelling. Um, and so I like to call this, instead of always be closing, always be creative. You need to really sell what you're doing. I want to talk about diversity for a second, which I think is one of the most important, the second most important thing for successful teams. Um, in the US, we have a big problem with diversity in technology. Um, people are often, I think, a little bit, not afraid is the wrong word, but they don't hire people that don't look differently than themselves, which I think is the easiest way to say this. And so I challenge you guys, I'm sure the same problem is here in, in Australia as well. Hire people that look differently than yourself. It's pretty easy for me. Um, the internet doesn't look like just you. When you have a world where my mom can comment on a blog post and someone from Asia can comment on it in Africa on the same blog post, we need to hire teams that represent that world, not the world of just white dudes in a corner with beards. And so I have two things that I think can help with this. The first one's kind of crazy. Try. Now you laugh, but how many here are trying? A few. The second thing I think is almost more important than the first, but there's an order here, which is you have to talk about it. You can't just let it go. If we don't talk about this, we won't have progress. And if you try and fail and talk about it, then someone will say, oh, have you tried this? If you try and succeed and talk about it, then we, it raises everyone up. I think this is, one of the, this is more important than diversity, although I, I think diversity is really important. Um, so building a team is really hard. Um, hopefully this helps, because it's honestly worth the difficulty, worth all the frustration. Let's move on to practicing failure. This is actually my favorite one. Um, so failing is obviously incredibly hard. Who here likes to fail? That's good. That's good. The older person says yes because he knows. Failing is the one reason why we were able to understand success. Without failure, we would never have understood how to be successful. And I think, I'm sure you're, you're very successful probably, right? Yeah, see, there you go. Um, but the most important thing that we did was practice. We did game days. They were called like tabletop exercises. Um, where we constantly destroyed, in a very real way, all of our applications. Um, we did this because it would create a run book. So when you had a failure, your database crashed, you could just turn to page 30 and type in a command and it would be back. But anyone could do that because we could not screw up, we could not fail. Um, and so this helped us quantify our limits um, and it allowed us to have no downtime. Um, we had catastrophic failure on election day and no one noticed. It was awesome. So let's talk a little bit about community. Um, this is the last piece. Um, so community, I think, is the most important thing. Does anyone here have online communities or offline communities that they facilitate? Okay, a few. That's good. I think more hands should probably be up because your users are your community. Um, and so that's really an important thing. Um, they're the number one asset. Um, they're the power behind your brand. They're the power behind your company. But more importantly, they're the power behind your success. Um, empowerment, this is the easy one. So empowerment, you just create the tools that you normally would have and give them to the users. Um, we noticed that we had a problem with people creating new designs on Threadless, so we created this thing called Critique, which we were the ones that were normally critiquing it. We thought, why don't we let the users do it? Let's empower them to do that task. You see this all over. Um, here's another, just ask the users what they want. Empower them to feel like they're connecting with you directly. The most important thing, though, is safety. So I have to basically treat it like a neighborhood, right? You want it to be, you don't want to have this. How many people go into a bad neighborhood and you instantly feel uneasy? You want it to be a good neighborhood. And then because at that point, you're, in, you're, you're influencing your users to be good neighbors. They don't have to have names. They can be anonymous. But it allows them um, to create a place where they want to be. Um, people will be attracted to that space. So create an environment worth trusting rather than trying to name people, etc. So that's about it. So remember, build a great team, practice failure, facilitate community, and above all, ship. Um, thanks.